Hi, I'm Spencer Bradley with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. This is part three of our Cougar video series. In this segment, we are gonna talk about some of the techniques and equipment we use to collect DNA samples from mountain lions, that's hair and scat. The first technique we'll talk about is installing rub pads on trees in high traffic areas to collect hair samples. These were made just by things we had laying around the house in the shed. This one on your left is a joist connector plate with a piece of felt material overneath, overneath the, uh, the plate. This one on your right is a piece of remnant carpet with nails sticking out of the back. Now you can install scent on these, uh, urine works fine. You can put uh, castor oil or real or artificial catnip and the, uh, the mountain lions or the cougars will smell this stuff and they'll come, ba come by just like a house cat would and they'll rub their face on their body, kind of getting that scent in their hair. This next technique we'll show you is called a rub post. What we've done, again, just using stuff that we found around the house, we put a, a rubber doormat and some barbed wire and wrapped it around this tree. Now you can use any combination of these. You can use one by itself, but you want it starting at the ground all the way up to at least four feet. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to use some kind of scent or bait to make this more attractive for mountain lions or cougars. Again, you can use any kind of urine, castor oil, catnip. Uh, if you really wanna get serious, you can use some roadkill or maybe a, a beaver carcass and hang this up above this scratch post around four feet. That'll keep uh, canines, coyotes, and, and domestic dogs from being able to reach it. You're still gonna have some bobcats, maybe some raccoons chewing on it, but it's gonna, it's gonna take care of a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the canines and other species that can't reach this. Again, uh, they'll come up, rub their body on this as they're reaching for the bait or the scent, and they'll leave their hair samples either on this barbed wire or on this, on this doormat. All right, so should your rub pads or scent posts have made some hair collections, it's time for you to properly collect them uh, yourself so that they can be sent off for good, solid DNA analysis. Now, it's really important not to contaminate the hair samples that you've collected. Clean latex gloves, a clean unused envelope, and also forceps or tweezers are mandatory for collecting uh, hair samples. So simply go on and collect the hair uh, that you've got here. We've got plenty that was left, uh, left by a domestic dog that we know of from the house. Um, place it in your envelope. Also on the outside of that envelope, you want your name uh, and contact, inf contact information and the same too with the piece of paper that you want to also place in here. Name, contact information, and also location is very important. Place that in there, seal that envelope well, and keep it at room temperature. The next step is going to be to send that off to the uh, Cooperative Extension System agent or also to a wildlife biologist to have this sample uh, properly analyzed for DNA to determine whether it was a cougar that left that hair or not. All right, so when it comes to cougar or mountain lion scat, um, it's very difficult to tell that scat apart from other animals like bobcats and coyotes. Uh, very similar as far as look and shape and size and color and all that good stuff. Um, but when it comes to collecting the samples, what is important is you don't contaminate that sample. You've got to make sure you wear clean latex gloves and also have a good sterile uh, stool sample container like you can get from medical supply stores or your doctor, places like that. Um, just simply pick the piece of stool up, place it in the container, and also flood this stool sample all the way uh, to the top of it with, a, with an ethanol solution. That will help to preserve that DNA. Um, that's by far the easiest way to, to do that. Uh, next up is make sure you place another tag inside this container with your name, uh, date, location, contact information. Uh, that's all very important. And also closely or uh, carefully close that container as tight as possible and mark that same information on the outside of this container. Now it's important to make sure that you get these samples off to a biologist and to a DNA lab as quickly as possible to make sure that you're able to have good, uh, a good, clean, and accurate uh, DNA analysis performed on it. And that's gonna help you to make sure that you are able to confirm the presence of cougars within the state of Alabama. Now to contact your local county office, look us up in the phone book under Alabama Cooperative Extension or get online to www.aces.edu forward slash directory. From there you'll find the interactive state map. Click on your county and then scroll down the staff to find the forestry, wildlife, and natural resources agent that serves your area. Then click on their name or picture and you'll find their office number, their mobile number, and also their email. Feel free to give us a call and we'll be glad to help you document whatever evidence you may find.